Hello, friends. Welcome to the stream on this Wednesday, the 3rd of June. Hello. How is everyone? Um, for anyone who missed it on Twitter, uh, all the money I get through Twitch this week, I am going to be donating to the Bail Project. So feel free to, uh, you know, do your do your stuff. Know where that money's going. Uh, also, if you would prefer to give directly, uh, there is a link in my panels as well. Uh, and you know, feel free to share resources and other good organizations to donate to while we are in the midst of what we are in the midst of, you know? It's all happening. Solidarity with the protesters. Doing what we can to affect change. Um, but today, here on the stream, I want to take a break from the real world and live in fantasy world. So I am going to be drawing your Dungeons and Dragons characters. Um, so yeah, if you've got a Dungeons and Dragons character, leave it in the chat. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get to everyone's, but you know, I'm just I'm just going to pick the ones that stand out to me. No shade to anyone's who I don't pick. Every Dungeons & Dragons character is lovely. Wow. Wow, we got some stuff happening. All right, I'm going to switch it to the to the stream screen. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Let's adjust that just a little. Uh, we, got, we already had a Tier 5 Hype Train, Level 5 Hype Train, Tier 5. What, what do we got? We got... We got some stuff happening. Um, Leonard Powers gave out a tier one community sub. Fo Schneider subscribed. Uh, Avalanche Watch gave out five tier one community gift subs. Um, I gotta turn on. I gotta turn on my bits notifications. I had them turned off, but I should I should turn them back on so I can see all the bits y'all are giving. Um, there we go. Now it's on. Um, Gotham City Siren subscribed for one month at Tier 1. Thank you so much. Sorry if I'm missing your, your channel points and bits, everybody. Uh, I do appreciate those as well. They're just, they're a lot. Um, wow. Level 3 hype train. Did I say level 5 hype train? It was level 3. Sometimes I see 5s and 3s wrong. It turns out is what I've learned. Level three is still great, though. You know, you get a lot of good stuff. If we're if we're talking about D and D, you get a lot of good stuff at level three. Um, a lot of, a lot of the the classes get to choose their sort of specialization at level three. Um, your um, your roguish archetype, your martial archetype, your um, your primal path. All those ones. Oh, now we're at level four. Okay, what's up? Um. Uchiron subscribed. Achampiga. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Subscribed. Koalatums cheered 500 bits. Thank you for the bits. Um, thank you all so much. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a character to start drawing just so I got something going on screen. Um, I might go slow for the first one since we are in the hype train and I do want to respect the hype train. DK the friend subscribed. Um, oh my gosh, Cantaloper gave out five tier one subs. Uh, by the way, we raised like I was checking the the analytics. It was Twitter was or Twitch was um, experiencing technical difficulties, at least on the back end, um, the other day. But I, I checked today, and we got we got around like two hundred from Monday stream. To, we made made about two hundred dollars from Monday stream. Um, so thank you all for that. That's all, that's all going to go to the bail project. Um, Ori, the narrator subscribed almighty me, m my, me, almighty me subscribed. Achlet subscribed. Can't your robot cheered some bits. Thank you for the bits. Oh, see now we're at level five. I just called it early. 
Um, all right, all right. Let me let me look. Let me look what we got. Uh, Earth Genasi monk who is all rock. Jadira Lala. Lia Lala. I'll draw an Earth Genasi, a rock, a rock monk. Start off simple, you know. I love how like detailed and and um, unique all the characters are, but I'm a simple man. I like simple things. A rock, a rock person. What punches? A rock person. What does the punches? Is just what I need to get warmed up here on the stream. So we're gonna start with that. Um, let me Google what Earth Genasi look like. For anyone unfamiliar, Genasi are like elemental. They're like descended from elementals. They've got elemental sort of stuff about them. And uh, just a big, oh my God, Andre with an I at the end gave out 50 tier one community gift subs. We're at a thousand percent level five hype train everybody thanks for the bits Sekhmet lives as well good lord andre with an eye at the end thank you so much that rules um so yeah i guess like the earth genasi they can they sort of just look like like sort of thick thick folks with uh with like grayish skin but I like the idea of one that's like really leaned into the rock sort of thing. So I'm going to let's let's pose this out. Let's get sort of a sort of a a, a a strong stance coming in. Maybe like a maybe sort of like or maybe maybe more like hmm. what do monks do? Maybe like sort of a head head look into the side this is the first thing i've drawn today y'all so it's gonna be it's gonna be a little rough but uh we're hopefully gonna hopefully we're gonna um improve as the as the stream goes on and you know some of these might be full body poses some of them might just be like chest up it depends on what i feel confident <laughs> drawing and um You know, that's just my Cintiq is really having some some interesting things to say about um, about how I about what what it's going to do. It's already doing the cool thing where it sometimes just forgets to do the. Uh, the um oh my gosh opacity pressure sensitivity the size pressure sensitivity but now it also sometimes will just put the uh put the cursor way far away from where i have it so you know feel free to see me get frustrated about that feel free get ready to see me get frustrated about that from time to time that's just that's just a little added bonus you get to see me get a little frustrated and that's you know that's part of it all right i think i think this is this is sort of the the pose we want i should really learn more about like martial arts before i try and draw martial arts poses but it's it's fantasy martial arts so anything goes um Wow. Rob Adair gave out five gift subs. Goosenberg gave out a gift sub. Thank you all so much. That was a hype train, y'all. I very much appreciate it. Um, I very much appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for, for hanging out with me while I just draw some stuff. And try and do just a little, just a, a little bit of a respite 
from everything that's going on. Um, and try and try and raise some money for the people who are who are working nonstop. Um, appreciate those folks. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just been. I didn't get any guests this week. I like really dropped the ball on that. I just been pretty overwhelmed. And if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I can't imagine how other people are feeling. So just want to have a nice time here. Let's see. Um, yeah, maybe sort of like, I think a shirtless mug, especially if you're all rocks, you know? Uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar, Janasi, so like they're, they're a Janasi for every, uh, all of like the four elements. And they're, I think they're, they're sort of people who can trace their ancestry back to elementals, um, is my understanding. And I imagine that manifests differently in different campaign settings. But I think like a Earth Janasi at some point in their, in their ancestry, one of their parents, one of their like ancestors was uh, earth elemental. In this case, a rock, a rock elemental. Um, sort of like how um, tieflings can trace their ancestry to demons and devils and Asimar. I don't know. Asimar are like, sometimes they're just fallen angels, but sometimes they're like, Again, like folks who just are descended from some sort of celestial uh, being. Wow. I don't know what is going on with my Cintiq, y'all. I apologize. It is moody. But we're still having fun. Um, so I'm just roughing in sort of a body pose here. Very sort of simple. It's a little static, I'll admit. It's a, it's a bit it's a bit of a static pose, but we're warming up. We're warming up here on the stream. I've been wanting to try out a monk in 5e. I haven't ever made a monk in 5e. I made one in um in 3rd edition. And um I do like I just like the the sort of aesthetic of an unarmored character i think that's very cool that they're like monks and barbarians can can just wear um uh no armor and still receive armor bonuses from like other stats um yeah, maybe one fist one open palm sort of like you can take take one or the other we're gonna make this more rocky, I think. More of a more of a rock type guy. Um gonna be saying um a lot. That's just that's just sort of how I do when I don't have a guest on. I mean I also say um a lot when I do have a guest on, but there's usually something to break that up. Um People, uh, just I'll, 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 I'll occasionally, I mean, between drawings, I will definitely check the chat and my notifications. I got to get some sort of stream notification set up. I'm sorry I haven't done that yet. It's, again, there's just a lot going on, and um, I'm just impressed that people are doing anything. I think it's impressive what people are able to do in times like these. But yeah, I love I love an, an unarmored character. I think if I made a monk, I might make a Kensi, a Kensai, or a Shadow Monk maybe. Maybe a Shadow Monk Rogue. Um, Cause I do like the, 
the ability the shadow monks get where they can just sort of teleport through shadows. I feel like that would work really well with a rogue. Just get those cool like teleportation sneak attacks. Um, maybe like, I don't know, something like this. I want to I add more movement to the to the piece. I'm just going to talk you through. People often ask about process, and my process is sort of um, very just like try something, see if it works. Even if it does work, still sometimes erase it because I don't like it <laughs> in the moment, and then I'll I'll go back and watch the episode and be like, oh no, that was fine. I don't know why I didn't like it, but we're going to make a sort of a knot here that doesn't make a ton of sense, and that's okay. I'm, I'm liking this, though. This is working. This is working for me. Um, all right. All rock. An all rock Genasi. So let's let's sort of get some some rock like features coming in. Um, let's maybe just like make it more sort of like jagged along the the musculature. Get some uh, get some of that sort of thing. See, it did it did the thing. Why does it do that? Maybe I gotta update something. I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> Head empty. I don't know anything. Let's just draw some D and D characters. That was what I was feeling today. I do like these sort of like arm wraps. I like that aesthetic. Don't want any tangents though. No tangents here on the stream, if I can help it. Tangents in conversation, not in drawings. Let's get some some thingies coming in. It's always a crapshoot whether the fingers are going to look how I want them to. I think this is all right. Pinky might be a little thick, but it's a rock. It's a rock friend. I think the thumb needs to be moved. Sometimes, if I like the way something looks, but it's in the wrong place, I will just move it instead of uh, <laughs> redrawing it. I was doing some like moving furniture around today, and. Um, my digital art brain was like I, I got something looking how I how I wanted and then I, I wanted to to copy paste it on the other side and I was like oh I can't do that <laughs> I'm gonna have to measure it out again just get some like some crackies coming in make it look make it look like rocks I like that y'all are like I can I can see in my perith peripheral vision that the chat is is going, and I like very much that you guys are are happy to chat with each other. Keep keep yourselves entertained while I just do these drawings. Maybe some like individual rock pieces too, just sort of like in there. I don't want to overwork it either, you know. I want it to I want it to feel natural. Something like this. Just all rocks. All rocks all the time. Just some real craggy some real craggy punches. A 
obviously the elbow will be sort of a its own its own thing there very good if I had a better sort of base understanding of anatomy I could really do some cool stuff with like how the muscles are all different rocks but you know we're we're just gonna it's just gonna be like this and that's okay too I think you're just we're just gonna have a nice chill time here on the stream today and I'm not gonna worry about it too much there's plenty to worry about but on the stream I can just worry about my Cintiq acting a fool behaving badly behaving badly for for the for the public maybe some like rock knuckles obviously a rock nipple right is that too raunchy is that too blue what do people think about rock nipple am i gonna get censored it's not necessarily a rock nipple maybe it's just it's just a little rock there where the nipple goes but the nipple itself is <laughs> ripple rock nipple abbreviates to ripple very good everyone um cool 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 jadira um all right let's do let's let's give a let's give our friend a rock face that's a term right rock face I do like the sort of like brow like a rocky sort of sort of heavy brow real focused sort of like that and we can sort of Bring that around. Just really, uh, really sculpt this face out, you know. Give it the old sort of tumbler nose. That's what people call that, right? When you fully outline the nose. But it's a rock, so it's different. bit more sort of definition here cheekbones you know sometimes I'm more chatty on streams I'm just I'm just feeling like I, I like the D&D &D ones because like it's a lot of just character design and uh, I can just get sort of lost in it talk talk through what I'm thinking about as I'm drawing but ultimately you know sometimes I'm just gonna go quiet and that's okay here we go like that maybe and I think we'll vary up the style as well this is sort of a more realistic drawing but like if something if something really feels like it should be more cartoony i'm not opposed to doing a more cartoony style as well some people are just so consistent with their style you know like they're like this is how i draw everything and they're able to to make it make sense I feel like Jacob's really good at that. That's why he's always the one I have uh, do the caricatures of people when we go to conventions. 
Man, I remember going to conventions, going out, going out to do something besides protest. Maybe someday. But yeah. Um, Jacob's got just like such a, a consistent, pleasant style with how he draws faces. And so he just sort of became our de facto caricaturist at conventions. Karina, too. She's really good at that. Just like making things look look real pleasant. Maybe some like rock bits up here. I do like this drawing though. For my first drawing of the day, it's not bad. I don't know if this is what you were looking for, but this is my interpretation. So I hope that's all right. Um, let's get some like rocky bits on the on the legs as well. Like it's definitely rocks, right? Like I don't think you can read this as something other than rocks. Maybe it's like, I don't know, a brownie with some nuts in it. I could see that too. I kind of like this. I think this is pretty good. Not starting off with a dud, you know. So that's that. I think one of the one of my biggest like lessons that I, I'm still trying to to take to heart from doing drawfy, doing live drawing is like sometimes the drawing just isn't going to turn out how you wanted it to. And you just have to, you just have to be okay with it. You just have to learn from it, but move on to the next one. And that's okay, you know? It's a, it's a learning process. No matter how experienced someone is at drawing, and I'm in no way the most experienced person at drawing, but like, even the very the very most experienced person at drawing is still is still going to learn something when they try they're still going to still going to make mistakes there's still going to be bits that they're not happy with and that's okay you can't be afraid of that i spent a lot of my life being afraid of that feeling and i think it kept me from from doing stuff that I might have otherwise tried. And it's always better to try and fail than to not try. Because you learn. It's the only way you learn. I'm saying this as much for my own, like th these are all things that <laughs> smarter people than myself have said better than me. And I'm still trying to instill that in myself because I, I do have this problem. It, it, it becomes, you know, paralyzing. You don't, you don't want to start working on something because all you can think about is like how it's not going to be the way you want it to be. You have so many cool ideas for how it's going to look and, and feel. And if you start working on it, then, then it becomes real. It's not just in your head anymore. It's not safe in your head. It's, it's on paper, and it means it can be messed up. It means it can be changed. It means that it might not be as good of an idea as you thought it was. You can't be afraid of that. Or you, you can be afraid of it, but you can't let it stop you. You know, You can accept that it's scary and still push through it. 
I don't know. I'm rambling. <laughs> Whatever your creative process is, is valid. Sometimes some ideas are just for you, and that is also okay. And you can keep those ones. You can keep those ones safe until you're ready. But you should find something to do in the meantime if you want to improve. Because we're all just trying out here, you know? Let me give it some just like little rock pieces popping off as he tightens his fist. Um, yeah, there's your, there's your Earth Genasi rock monk. I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll do like a, sort of like one of these. Something like that. Something like that. That's a D&D. &D. That looks pretty D&D &D to me. I'm going to keep adding lines to it. I got to stop. All right. All right. First drawing done. First drawing of the stream, I say, as I keep going back in. Okay. Okay. Can't overwork it. We're done. We did it. Let's look at the chat. Let's look at the notifications. Oh man, we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff. Let's let's do okay. Leonard Powers gave out two community gift subs. Paradox Gavel subscribed. Sizak subscribed. Kencha Robot cheered one bit. Kencha Robot cheered eight bits. Thanks for all the bits. Shy Twink gave out a tier one sub. Thank you all for the for the subs. All right, let's take a look at the chat. Okay, an Asimar Druid, that's cool. Um, oh man. Um Park Ranger Tom is very good. A lamp post that was turned into a human? Wow. Yeah. I'll draw a lamp post that was turned into a human who's a fighter. A lovable dope. This one this one's gonna be more cartoony, I think. I think that's that's how it's got to be. A lamp post. Let me I want to I want to incorporate some lamp post like into the design a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm really just picking these at random, y'all. So don't, please don't take it as a judgment on your character. Um, if I don't pick yours, I, there's only, you know, I'm going for two hours. I'm going to draw as many as I can. And um, if I don't get yours, I'll probably do more drawing D&D &D characters. That, I just love talking about D&D. &D, so, um, I'll I'll probably do this again sometime. Uh, so just know, just know all your D and D characters are wonderful. I just love reading about them too. Like when we did this with Brennan on on Drawfee, it was just so fun getting to see how excited everyone is about their character and how much fun this game is for everyone. And I'll say I'll say this: uh, if you like D and D Fifth Edition, I highly recommend you check out Shadow of the Demon Lord. It is 
probably currently my favorite uh, tabletop role playing game. Uh, that I, I don't know if you if anyone saw Julia her her drawing of her character from the game that I'm playing with her and um, uh, Jacob and Brian Miller is uh, DMing, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of D and D fifth edition elements. Like if you're familiar with D and D fifth edition, it will make a lot of sense to you. But it, I, I love the character creation system in that game. I like the way, um, like leveling up works, and um, the the amount of customization available. And I really like how spell casting works, and I like the way that they've sort of streamlined I think I'm just going to start over with this head this head is too realistic um, uh, I like the way that they um, streamlined like instead of advantage and disadvantage you get banes and boons and there's no um, there's no proficiency bonus it's just basically if if you can make the argument that your character would have some experience some relevant experience with a check uh, and you make your case successfully to the dm then you get uh, a bane and a, ba a bane a boon excuse me and a boon is a d6 that you roll and add to your d20 roll if there's something you know that the dm feels is making the check harder for you you get a bane and that's a d6 that you roll uh and subtract from your uh, d20 roll and basically like banes and boons cancel each other out so you you're basically sort of building characters to stack as many boons as possible so that you can deal with whatever uh the dm is throwing at you there are spells that grant boons there are you know depending on like your abilities like if you're a fighter you get a ton of boons for doing weapon attacks if you're a rogue you have like versatile boons that you can apply to weapon attacks or skill checks if you're a spellcaster um I, I the spell casting in that game is so like vast it it's very much dependent on like what tr spell tradition you um you choose to specialize in because like the way it works is like spells are broken down into different traditions and you need to learn the tradition in order to uh in order to cast spells from it so like if you want to cast fire spells like you have to it, it sort of it it makes it so that like the the character you make gets flavored based on the the types of spells you want to be uh good at casting sort of thing i don't know i like it a lot i think it's a lot of fun i highly recommend people check it out um and it is set in sort of a more dark fantasy setting. That's sort of the the way that it's set up. But you could absolutely run just sort of a, a high fantasy um, style game using that system as well. And um, I think it would work. Brian likes it because he he's not the biggest 5e fan and it, it has enough stuff from 5e and enough like crunchy sort of optimization min maxing stuff uh for me to enjoy it because that's what i like about fantasy role-playing games but uh it also just has a ton of cool world building and it's very streamlined in a lot of ways that um allows him to make the adventures that he wants to make and put us in these sort of impossible moral quandaries that's that's brian's thing is is just sort of like emotionally torturing <laughs> our characters by um making us have to deal with impossible choices and and that sort of thing and so it's it's sort of a best of both worlds 
situation. I could talk at length about how much fun I've had playing Shadow of the Demon Lord. Um, I don't know if anybody watched the um, uh, when Dorkly used to do uh, Twitch streams. Brian ran a sort of a modification of Shadow of the Demon Lord called Godless, which is like it's the same rule system, but it's set in a post-apocalyptic world. And I played a very large, uh, a very large boy uh, named Jorg, uh, who was just just sort of a, an unarmed, like a pugilist, sort of just very big, good at good at punching and tussling. He loved to tussle. He had a shirt that said "Tussle Time" on it, but it was worn out, so it said "Tussle Tim." And so people called him Tussle Tim, even though his name was Jorg. Um, and uh, yeah, the rules for critting in that game are, are pretty wild. There's like a a whole section called Forbidden Rules, and um, so we were we were doing like sort of a time travel adventure, and. I tried to tussle with a T-Rex and I rolled a nat 20 and then I rolled there's there's a if you roll you roll 3d6 and when you crit and that determines what the crit effect is and I rolled all sixes and if you roll all sixes on the crit table according to the rules of Shadow of the Demon Lord you just deal damage equal to the creature's health and so it was the first attack against this T-Rex that was like meant to be sort of the big fight of the adventure. And I just one shot it. It was pretty great. I'll say that. It felt it felt good. It was just like, well, narratively, my character just walked up to this T-Rex, put it in a chokehold, and destroyed it. Um, oh boy. We gotta get Chat, catch up. Chat, catch up. I paused the chat on the wrong spot. All right. So obviously I feel like he's wielding. I don't know if I, I, I skimmed. I'm giving this lamppost warrior a sort of lamppost shaped maul to wield. I don't know if that's correct. But... This is what I have decided. Um, maybe I should have titled the stream Nathan Draws His Interpretations of Your D&D Characters. But I think that was implied. Um, anyway. That was my uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord plug. I think it's a super fun game. And if you're into fantasy tabletop role-playing games, I recommend checking it out. I also think 5e is a lot of fun. Um, I think they're all fun. I think all those games are like as fun as your imagination and the imagination of your, uh, your crew and your game master allows them to be. That's just my opinion. Take it for what it is. The perspective on this is a nightmare, but we are um yeah, that's that's wrong. That's fully wrong. <laughs> Whoops. Um it should be like Oh no. <laughs> what have I done? Oops. <laughs> Y'all just watch me do that. Okay. Okay, we can fix this. We can fix this. Don't worry, guys. I have a plan. <laughs> Unbelievable, Nathan. Unbelievable. How could you let this happen? Um... 
so it's coming at us i've decided i made it coming at us so it's gotta be like getting oh gosh <laughs> oh no <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> Why did I do it like that? <laughs> I know I could just change the perspective on it, but I like how that looks so much. So I'm going to have to make this hand make sense now. Is it possible? Can it just... Okay. I can cheat it. I can for sure cheat it. It's just going to be like coming out like that. This is just going to be like e. Maybe move the elbow up like that. Like it's sort of like he's doing a double. That's not how you hold it. No, it's okay. It's okay. I appreciate I appreciate the help, everyone. It's okay. We're gonna make it make sense. We're gonna it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna it's just gonna be doing a little bit of a twist, is all. The hand is just gonna be doing a little bit of a twist. And I think that's okay. Something like that. I mean, it's pretty similar to how I had it already. It just... Mm. I don't know why I did this to myself. <laughs> That's just part of it. That's just part of the, the, the joy of, of drawing. I'm just gonna have that arm going like bam. And then just some some foreshortening. Some foreshortening here. Ooh, that's frustrating. I think that's okay. It's a little awkward, but I think it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna allow it. We're gonna allow it to be like that. I think I'm gonna give him like big old glove like gauntlets and that's gonna sort of cover up the fact of what I've done. Let's make the hand a little bigger too. I feel like when the hands are bigger, like they're more forgiving. It's still not right. <laughs> it's still it's still wrong. It's still it's a it's a dimensional it's a magic uh uh hammer that that does it that's doing a twist and it's fine. It's just that's just what it's doing. And it's fine. It's fine that it's doing that. And we've all agreed that it's fine that it's doing that and it's fine that it's doing that. It's not like I have to submit this to my editor. I'm not publishing this. This is just my drawing that I'm doing on stream. And it's okay. <laughs> this is exactly what I was talking about. You gotta just, you get, sometimes you just have to go for it. And even if it doesn't work, just like, that's okay. Um,. Let's see, for the shoulders, I think, uh, maybe one of these sort of like, like this aesthetic, like that lampposts sometimes have. Um, like where, where it would like dangle from. Maybe I'll have a little dangle. Maybe I'll have a little dangle. You ever, you ever have a little dangle? I should stop saying dangle. I don't like it. I don't like that I've done that. 
if I if I say enough dumb stuff, then that will distract from the perspective of this hammer. It's sort of coming at us on this side. We're having fun. We're having fun here, y'all. Don't worry about it. I am I'm 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 playing it up. I'm hamming it up for the for the stream. But I'm having fun. Don't worry about me. Make something like something like this. Something like that. Do 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 do. I don't know if it needs a dangler. I think that's too much work. That's too much extra work to give myself. No dangler. But I do like this look. Sort of like bam. Bam. It's just every so often it just wants to go off. I like I'll flip it around and it just is like you met over there, right? I don't know. If anyone from Cintiq is watching, I'll want to tell me <laughs> what I'm doing wrong. Because it worked great. And it, it it still does work great most of the time. I'm just being, you know, it's a it's a, a poor artist who who blames their tools and I I do blame my tools, so but that's okay. We're figuring it out. One thing I do want to do is get better at like drawing armor, like different types of armor. Cuz I feel like I have like a couple sort of ideas about how armor looks, but then this whole crotchal zone in armor is always um it's always a little tricky for me. I mean, drawing the the pelvis zone in general is tricky for me. I I, do, I don't now that's something you can take out of context. The pelvis zone is tricky for me. In drawing and in real life, I think. I think both. Um, that's just... That's just always been true. That's just a true thing about me. You get to know on stream. Um, I like... I like sort of um I like the the sort of like like scales or whatever like this this sort of like um like the metal sort of sort of dress that comes down to cover cuz like you got to you got to cover up down there if you're going to be doing if you're going to be doing the the battles you're going to want some protection that's just that's just good old common sense. So I think, yeah, something, something like these sort of like leafy looking metal, metal bits is good. And that's a tangent right there I made. Y'all can see it. Don't even act like I didn't make a tangent right there. Mm. Mm mm mm. No, sir. Fixing that right up. Okay. Maybe do something like that. Get a 
little like knee knee blockers in. Get this more sort of symmetrical. So like that. Bigger to match. Got this this sort of thing coming in. Um, maybe like another sort of like band here. I don't know if that makes sense, but no, I don't like that. I don't like how that looks. When you don't like how something looks, you erase it. I think just sort of like a sort of like a real bulbous chess piece. Because the the idea behind this character, I don't know if people I, I didn't I didn't read the whole thing out loud, but the, this is a this is a lamppost that a wizard turned into a human with a, a magical experiment that it, it killed the wizard. And so it's like it's a fully grown human person who is a a fighter, but they were like born yesterday, so they're just sort of a big a big dope. And that's that's a fun archetype, just the big dope character. Just sort of a big old hole right there. That's a that's a, a vulnerable spot I've given you, right in the armpit. That's okay. You can do. You can take it. I just know it. Um. Anyway. It's always cool when like you're drawing something and you've got this cool pose and then you draw a piece of armor and it looks cool from one angle and then you have to figure out how it would even make sense from a completely different angle. And it's just like, well, I've, I've given myself this task now and that's okay. I've left the face for last. I want him to look like very confused. I think like sort of a long neck. I mean, he is a he is a post after all. He was he was born from from being a a lamp post. So maybe something like I think like a sort of a big nose. And eyes like huh. <laughs> sort of like uh oh. Uh, don't make me hit you. I'll do it. I'm even more vacant, like, uh. Oh, geez. We don't want to have the cheek tangent with the nose, so we're going to make the nose even longer. <laughs> what is happening with this face shape? Okay, okay, it's okay. Yeah, there we go. No, almost. A little bit. Come on. Get there. Get there. That's pretty good. Yeah. Sort of a long face. Uh. I think this is one of them like metal collar type dealies. And um I 
think I think obviously some sort of lamp post type uh helmet like uh God, please work. <laughs> please, this idea that I have in my head work. Because I want, like, oh boy. All right, all right. Okay. Okay, Nathan, people are watching. Just draw, you know how to draw. You've drawn hundreds of times before. Um, pretty good. This is all right. Let's 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 look at <laughs> stalling for time, adding some details to other bits. It's a little sort of like that. Um, okay, I think it's more just sort of like, sort of like a dome, like that. What a, <laughs> why can't I draw this angle? It's like, okay, let's just break the face down into, there we go. And then it's like, bloop. Look at that. The steeper, the steeper angle. There we go. Here we go. This is going to work. This is gonna work, god damn it. Yeah. Sort of like that. Sort of like that is what I'm thinking. Sort of like a TARDIS almost. Yeah. That's okay. We'll take that. I think we can take that, call that a, call that a mixed success to use a D and D term. Look at our, look at this friend. He doesn't want to fight. He's so confused. <laughs> He's just a lamp post. Maybe add a little bit of like sort of a helmet motif down here, sort of like a This side of the face is just a, some, some's happening over here that I did not anticipate. It's okay. Just put it in shadow. When in doubt, just put it in shadow. Fix the angle. Make it more like that. Make it more of a dome over there. And maybe like, Maybe like these sort of like legionnaire type things on the side. No, we don't need that. We don't need any of those. That's overkill. It's just a hat. It's just, it's just a big dumb hat that he has on. <laughs> That's okay. I think this side just needs to be a little shorter. This because of the because the angle
Yeah. Oh boy. I really did it to myself. That's okay. Thank you all for bearing with me here on the program. You know, I thought I'd give myself a little design challenge and uh I did I did it that. Um I think that's okay. I think that's all right. Maybe a cape. What if it's like like he's got like one of them capes up under the armor sort of sort of deal? Like um like that guard captain and hunchback of Notre Dame. Sort of like Come on. Come on. There we go. Boop. Boop. Like that. I think that's pretty good. You know, if you don't like how part of your drawing looks, just add bits to distract from it. You know? I think this is actually pretty good, all things considered. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Lamp Post. He's a lamppost, but he's a guy. Oh, a moth. Yeah. Get a moth in there. Get a couple. Very good. Oh, all right. Thank you all. For uh, for sticking with me while I puzzled that one out. Sometimes you just gotta puzzle it out, and then you take a step back and you're like, "Let's fix it. Let's make it a little there." All right, angles don't make a ton of sense, but they make not as little sense as before. I I noticed what I was doing, and that's okay. That's gonna happen sometimes, you know. You're just gonna. That's what I was talking about before. You can't let it stop you from trying. Even if it is hard, even if it's embarrassing. I do appreciate you all. You're very positive. You make me feel good about my drawings. We're just trying stuff, you know? Okay. All right, let's see. What I miss? Ooh, we got some stuff happening. Um, Jadiferous cheered. Kinsha Robot continues to cheer. And Anokaya account name. <laughs> it's an okay account name is is what it says. And I'm, I, I was sounding it out. I didn't read the whole. It's an okay account name. It is an okay account name. Anokaya Count Name. <laughs> Come on, Nathan. <laughs> Thank you for the subscription, okay, account name. Oh my god. Um <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh gosh, so many good. Oh man. Oh man, okay. Okay, what are people saying?
Let's keep the drawing up while I look at these. So many good ones. Gubriella the Gluttonous, a feral goblin rogue. I like that. I like that. There's so many, like, some of them are, like, too good. <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't want to ruin them, you know? I don't, I, like, I want to do them justice. Some of the, like, some of y'all have such well, uh, well, like, thought out characters that it's like, what's even left to draw, you know? Like, you got it. You have such a clear image when you, when you hear it. So a feral goblin, uh, rogue. So let's make this goblin kind of feral. I do like that. I like, you know, I like a nice simple one to draw every once in a while. I like the complicated ones too. I like the really detailed ones as well. And I encourage everybody to read what everybody else is writing because like, there's just some good ideas in there you can just take for yourself, you know? But, um, yeah, a little wall-eyed sort of, little feral goblin I just wanted to draw something small I'm I'm picking these I'm going there there's no criteria I can't stress this enough there's no criteria for for how I'm picking these it's really just whatever whatever speaks to me in that moment so there's no way to game the system I'm going to draw what I'm going to draw and uh, and that's just how it's gonna be, and that doesn't that doesn't mean that your characters aren't wonderful. <laughs> I love this drawing I've done already. How do goblins look in in D and D D and D goblin? Okay, so their ears are even like crazier than what I've got. These are like, they're like, uh, sort of like that. And, um, if you want a uh, if you want the the PNG of the the drawing I made of your character, just um, at me or DM me on Twitter. I think that's the the fastest way to get in touch with me, and I will send it to you um, for you to have. So just just let me know. Camera. I think we're sort of seeing like an over the shoulder, like Argh. it is a rogue. So like maybe a hood. Like sort of like maybe like a sneaking pose, like Argh. Sometimes you have to make the noise while you're drawing. One thing I remember from uh, before I even was doing Drawfee, just working at College Humor, making the comics, is just like looking over and seeing Caldwell, the faces he would be making while while doing his drawings. And... Uh,
Those were good. Sometimes you just make the face that you're trying to draw. And that's part of it. You make the face, you make the noise. Goblins have hair, right? Yeah, they can have hair. I'll give this goblin some hair. I think maybe like one of these sorts of deals, like a... Just sort of all over the place, this goblin. And I think that's okay. Who, me? I wasn't doing anything. I was just being a goblin, you know? Just, uh, don't worry about it. Don't even, don't ask any questions, okay? I'm a goblin. Should've just gave her a hoodie. It's not what I meant to do, but it's like a, I'm thinking of like the, the Thieves Guild armor from, uh, from Skyrim, which by the way, I would play more Skyrim. Zach was telling me if, if what Zach told me is true, what Zach's friend told me or told Zach about being able to get the uh, Elgato to work on Mac. If I could stream some um, some Switch games, I would absolutely stream some Skyrim because I love that game. I don't even know if I'd start a new game if or if I would just continue the one I have because there's like so much stuff in there that I'd still have left to do. I mean, there is something nice about starting fresh and like getting everybody involved in the character creation process, but I don't know. I'd have to see about getting an Elgato and making sure it actually worked before I did any such thing, but If I could just, you know, if I could just make my living <laughs> playing Skyrim on the internet, I think I would. <laughs> as much as I love drawing, I do like gaming as well. I like the games that you don't have to be like, you don't have to be like a pro Dark Souls speedrun strats type you can just sort of you can just sort of take your time like skyrim it's just you can really take your time you can you can make of it whatever you want if you want to just spend an entire like several hours growing plants making yourself a little garden in your home property that you that you've built you can do it and like you're still leveling up your character if you turn those plants into potions get some points into alchemy i love games like that that'll just let you do whatever and it's not like it's not an invalid way to uh to play i think it's good I think it's good. Um, all right, what is what is happening with this? This sort of maybe okay, maybe this is like a cloak. I think maybe this is like a cloak with a hood, and it's sort of coming down the back. Look at that. And then we've got like maybe 
be sort of like again i love the arm wraps look i know i did sort of that with the uh with the monk i drew but i just i just like that look and um yeah i mean obviously we we got to be we got to be wielding a dagger that's like rogue rogue 101 right there like a real just like nasty a real nasty dagger one that's like gonna feel bad if you get caught with it I guess there's not really a dagger that would feel good if you get cut with it, but like a real just sort of, eh, you know, it's like it's kind of rusty too. Like this, it's not gonna heal clean, even if you get away. It's like dirty. just sort of like out like doing like one of these like a reach sort of, sort of like that we've really come across this this friend I'm gonna make the cloak a little longer we've come across this friend at a bad time and they are not happy to see us. Anyway, you know, like that. What do, what do you guys think? Maybe an earring? I feel like Rogue, Rogue could have earring. He got such a big ear as a goblin. Why not? Why not put a little, put a little earring in it, for fun, for funsies. This sort of tattered cape. Um, maybe just some like some scars on the arm. You know, if you're if you're a feral rogue, you're gonna get cut up. I bet. That's just part of it. That's just part of your your experience at that point. Don't want to tend. Don't want to spend too much time on this, but I am kind of. I'm vibing with this drawing quite a bit. I feel like I, I got a good amount of movement here. I'm pretty pleased with. And the nice thing about like. Fancy creatures like goblins and whatnot is the anatomy doesn't have to totally. Totally make sense. Like you can just sort of. You can fudge it a little bit. 
and that's okay. Proportions are all can be all sort of a little bit exaggerated. I think that's fine. I think that's just artistic license. I remember when I was a kid, I learned about artistic license, and I thought it was the coolest thing. So I had like a. Um, like one of them uh, like bedside quilts that you hung on the wall. I don't know if I've told this story before, but um, like one of these sort of bedside quilts that you hang on the wall and um, it had an elephant and the elephant was colored sort of yellow and pink. And I asked my mom, I was like, why is the elephant colored that way? That's not, uh, that's not what elephants look like. And my mom explained artistic license to me. It was like, you know, the artist decided that even though elephants in nature do not look that way, they made the artistic decision that for this piece, they were going to make the elephant those colors. And, um, and so later, I must have told this episode, this episode, this story on a Drafi episode or a stream. But later I was at like a, um, some event at uh, the local library where, um, I don't know, some, some artist was there and they were like drawing a scene and they were asking for suggestions on like, you know, it was like, it was like a, a child's participation type, type deal. They're asking for suggestions like, okay, so what uh, what color should the lake be? And I said orange. And they were that was not what they were looking for. They were looking for blue. I mean that you know they were just there, hoping that kids would uh would know what color lakes typically are. I think a nice orange lake is fun though. You know, at sunset you can get some orange in a lake. But no, they were they were looking for blue, um, and so I remember asking my mom. I was like, I guess uh, I guess they never heard of artistic license. Not really a story, just you know, more of an anecdote. But uh, they were not they were not pleased. They didn't appreciate the. Uh, the request for a, for an orange lake, but I can, you know, I'm an artist now. I can make my lakes whatever color I want. If I ever drew a lake, if I ever drew a lake, do 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 do. do. Yeah. I think this is a this is a feral goblin rogue if ever I've seen one. Ready to ready to do some stabs, pick some pockets, pick some locks and just go absolutely nuts on someone maybe just a little bit of spittle coming out of the mouth just a little bit of just like air it's looking a little rick and morty but i think that's okay i think it's okay to like i think it's okay to like if you acknowledge that some of the people who like it aren't the best. You can still enjoy it. You can still enjoy the thing. That's my opinion, anyway.
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Some spots. Okay. That's a uh, that's our feral uh our feral goblin rogue. Hope people <laughs> This mouth <laughs> this mouth is really just doing its own thing. That's okay. <laughs> maybe this maybe like like that, yeah. That sorta. I always say I'm done and then I like keep working it just because I I don't know. I don't like to this is my favorite part is like when it's almost done and then like you can just do make little tweaks. It's like you did all the all the heavy lifting up top. And now you've got this like little little thing you can just sort of futz with. Make little little adjustments. Also notice things that you left and thought, oh, I'll come back to that at some point and then didn't. Okay. But you got we're on we're on stream. We gotta keep we gotta keep going. We gotta keep moving. It's not just it's not just me here. It's all of you. And I do appreciate all of you. Um, all right, what's up? Um, how's everyone? How is everyone feeling? Grumpy gnome grandma artificer wizard who makes offensive potions. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll do another little, another, another small folk. A grumpy grandma. Going back to, um, going back to, uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord. I, uh, I did make a, uh, uh, sort of a, uh, an old lady, little old lady halfling character in, uh, in one of the adventures that, um, she did, she did die. She didn't make it. She didn't make it all the way to the end. She sacrificed herself to uh to save the party from a from a TPK. That's a thing that um Brian Miller does is um he'll he'll go outside the rules um if uh if he makes an encounter too hard or if we just do a bad a bad enough job at the encounter and um uh if if one person is willing to sacrifice their character then the the encounter can end and everyone else can can be saved and so that's what happened in that instance is uh everybody it was it was looking bad it was looking bad for everybody and uh i uh i made i made the decision that my character would uh would sacrifice herself to save her her young friends. Do old ladies have bushy eyebrows? I think they can. I don't see why not. I think this is good. What do you mean you don't like my potion? 
I was slaved all day making this potion. You gotta enjoy it. Oh, that's another fun thing it likes to do is just uh, make just a big old line of eraser through everything. I don't know why. I don't know what I've done to deserve this treatment from uh, from my Cintiq. I take good care of it. I give it I give it plenty of wipe downs and I update the software, but even still doesn't doesn't want to work as it as it once did. May that be my biggest problem, you know? If my Cintiq being a little fussy is my biggest issue, then I, I guess I've I've got it pretty good. All things considered. So she's just gonna be I think just like holding a couple of potions. This is my just sort of go-to. <laughs> it's like they gotta be holding something. Every D and D character. I mean, I guess that's why I like drawing D and D characters is because typically they're holding something like a weapon or a a magic item or something. I think maybe just she's just, just like this part's in in shadow. She's got like a big old robe on. Let's say, give her like a cane. Potion bottle, some sort of vial concoction. She's just like, you better appreciate it because I only got one. Yeah, I can make more, but I only made one. So deal with it. Corcus in there. It's a little thinner, so it makes sense that she's holding it the way she is. Do do do, beep beep boop boo. Um, if I were to have more guests on streams, who would you who would you guys like to see? Would you like to see more of uh, some of some of my friends who uh, who you maybe don't know? Or uh, would you would you like to see some like old CH folks? Because I I could reach out to people. I'm bad at correspondence, but I can do it. I feel like it does help having another person to be making sounds with their mouth while I draw. Invite God onto the show. Caldwell, David. Ooh, David, yeah. These are all good suggestions. These are all good suggestions. And they have been noted. I know Caldwell is super duper busy, but I would enjoy streaming with him, especially if uh, if he could uh, do.
do some of the drawing too. That would really that would really take some of the heat off me, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> take a little break from time to time from the drawing. I love the drawing. Don't get me wrong. But I love a break. Love to take a break. That is uh I guess that's one of the hardest parts about being unemployed is like I could just take breaks all day if I wanted to, but uh and I do want to. And so it's it's me. It's me who has to tell me to stop taking a break. And that is hard. It's part of the reason why I started streaming. It was just like there needs to be at least some part of the day where you're doing something. You know? You got to have some semblance of a schedule. Cuz it really went from like unemployed to quarantine to now. It it feels like a a real a real quick <laughs> sort of sort of whiplash. I know it, it was like everything feels like it's been forever and immediate all at once and uh it's pretty wild it's pretty wild style i got to i got to say but we're uh you know we're doing it we're doing what we can i appreciate you guys keeping me company through it all being your wonderful selves. It really it really does make a make a difference. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you for for everything that you do. I think that is important to say. I do appreciate you all very much hanging out, making it so I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> I'm talking to myself and you. It's all nice. It's all nice in here. It can be bad out there, but it can be nice in here, you know? Even if it's just for a little while every day, every other day. It makes a difference to me. This face I drew on this lady. <laughs> she is just so give her some eyelashes maybe. Oh yeah. I don't know, maybe she manicures her eyebrows a little bit more. How do how do gnomes do eyebrows? Maybe she's got like real sort of like Oh, I like that. I kinda I kinda dig that. Like you're a, you're a, a wizard. You can you can do all sorts of cool style and stuff. Just cast prestidigitation on a part of your body and make it look extra styling. Let's get the link. Kane. I will fix this thumb. Don't worry, everyone. <laughs> I know some of you were worried that I was just going to leave that thumb as it was. Don't worry. I got you. I do like playing an old, an old character, an old lady character. I had a lot of fun with, uh, with Gertrude before Brian killed her. I mean, it was, it was a mutual decision. To have her sacrifice herself, but still, I'd I'd play another old uh, 
old lady, an, an old small lady with magic powers. Because I feel like, I don't know, old ladies in real life kind of have magic powers too. At least the ones in New York. You see them on the subway and you're just like, damn. You're less, you're less afraid than I am. Because you got powers. Um, yeah. I've not been on the subway in a minute, so that's more of a memory than a uh, than a recent observation. But still, I think it I think it holds true. How are we doing on time? I think we got time for one more. Finish this one up. I've seen a few that I've been like passing over that look cool to me. They just look complicated. <laughs> they just look like they'd be hard for me to draw. <laughs> Some of them I'm like, oh dang, that's really cool. I wish like someone else was here to draw that so I could see how that looked but I'm the one drawing. And so I like to go easy on myself. Oop. <laughs> Why does it go over there? I'm not touching over there. It wants to go over there. These hands are, they're fine. Oh, I gotta finish up her freaking hat. I just left it. I just left it like that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I just left it like that? After all we've been through? If I just left it like that? No, I would never. This grumpy old lady has gotta has gotta have a, a styling hat. I mean it's just gonna be a wizard's hat, but still. It could it could have like uh I think it's yeah, it's gonna come down sort of like like that. Maybe a little flower. Just sort of like. Beautiful. There she is. Oh, she's not having it. She's not interested in your sass or your guff. She's just gonna give you a potion, and you're gonna like it because she worked. She worked hard on it. Gnome grandma. So good. So good. So true. So powerful. Okay. All right, what do we got? One more. One more. This one will be... I mean, if we go... It's got 10 minutes, but if we go over, that's fine. I want to do it. I want to do it justice. Okay. Okay, okay. Tiefling Wildfire Druid. I don't know about Wildfire Druid. Is that on Arth Arcana or... Wildfire Druid. Circle of Wildfire, Unearthed Arcana. This is playtest content. Scorching Ray, Fireball, cool. So you like have Druid spells and fire spells. Hell yeah. You get a Wildfire Spirit. You learn the Firebolt cantrip. You summon the Primal Spirit. 
So you get like a, a fiery familiar and you get some like really powerful fire spells. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'll draw that. I'll draw that for sure. Thanks for teaching me about a new unearthed. Ar I love the stuff they come up with, that playtest stuff, you know? Especially because some of it, like, <laughs> they have not balance tested. And so it's just, like, wildly powerful. But this sounds cool. So a tiefling, wildfire druid, uh, fire nature themed, wields a big stick to safely poke snakes and also to play fetch with the puppy. All right, yeah. There's a, a cute puppy hellhound, tiefling, fire, fire tiefling, yeah. Okay, okay. So let's do like a, like sort of maybe like a haunched over pose, sort of like a, similar to the goblin, but not quite as, not quite as feral. So we're gonna have like a, sort of a stick, and maybe um, one hand just sort of out with some fire. Just like, like that. You know, I'm going. I'm going real loosey with this one. This one's a, a nice sort of loose, loose pose. But we gotta get that cute hellhound in there. Let me look up a hellhound. What's a hellhound look like? Ooh, we got some. I uh, sorry, I missed the. I didn't check the notifications because I was so eager. But Lot Norm gave out five tier one subs. Thank you, um, Emily ACV subscribed, TKO musician subscribed. Thank you both. Wow, Hellhounds look very cool. But this one's gonna be cute. Okay. He's like sort of looking right at us like, yeah. Like that and let's just let's just fix that hand right right now. Sort of more like cupping it, cupping the flames. Yeah, that's better. That's what we. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. Like just sort of like some druidy stuff. Maybe some. I really like the way in uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, like all the different races, um, armor looks different on each of them. And I really like the way like the mage armor looks on elves. It's just like feathers and pelts and stuff. It's all just very like patchwork. And I think that's sort of the, the aesthetic I want to go for here. You know, with tieflings, the horns can do all sorts of stuff. So if this isn't what you imagined your horns doing, that's, you know, that's fine. I just, I felt like going this route. But obviously, the classic up horns is also valid. I'm just, you know, we're just we're just experimenting. We're just having fun here on the stream. I've I've been having fun. I appreciate you bearing with me as I struggle through some of these drawings. But uh 
That's my process. My process is to do a lot of groaning. <laughs> and, um, yeah. I think long hair for a druid. You know, you're sort of out, out in the woods. You're not getting haircuts that often. Just sort of like a, oh, hey, <laughs> welcome to the fire. Happy to have you here. I don't know why I don't know why I went with this sort of like gaunt look, but I do I do kind of like it. I feel like it works for like a fiery sort of sort of character, just sort of like you know, just very very sort of chill, just like, yeah, I'm I'm just out here lighting fires. Don't don't worry about it. Don't need to worry about it. Because, like, I know tieflings are, um, they're, they're, like, infernal or abyssal sort of descendants, but I feel like if you're, if you're going to be a druid, like, you're going to just sort of pick up, like, elements of, of the fae as well, even if you're, even if you're a fiery-themed druid. It's like nature fire, you know? So this is sort of looking... It's looking kind of like a like a satyr almost or like a, a fawn. A pan's labyrinth. Getting some pan's labyrinth vibes from this drawing I've done. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a little bit like <laughs> you're a little bit like <laughs> fire, you know. I don't know. I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to figure out the character characterization from the the tidbits of info that you've given me. I feel like anyone with that many fire powers is going to just have a little bit of like an unstable look in their face. Just like you're going to light some stuff up, maybe a little bit. Everybody in your party has to be a little bit worried <laughs> if they're standing near a big group of enemies that like maybe they're going to get caught <laughs> on fire. I know I mentioned this a lot, but I've been playing a lot of um, Divinity Original Sin 2 on uh, on Steam, and um, I, I mostly have, most of my playthroughs I've, I haven't actually finished the game, but most of the, the characters I've made have been sort of physical damage dealers, like archers or rogues or, or fighters. But I'm I'm finally playing a spellcaster, and boy, I keep accidentally lighting uh, my teammates on fire. <laughs> that is just that's just something that that happens. I don't know what it is. It's like I see I see the enemies clustered together, and I just don't see my allies <laughs> anymore. I know they're right there, like. I, I, part of me knows they're right there, but I still just just don't <laughs> don't regard them as I should.
and they get mad, but that's part of it, you know? I feel like this is a very flammable outfit I've given you, but you control the fire. Maybe it's a little singed, like you've got some like singe marks on it because you've you've lit yourself on fire. Litten, you've lit yourself on fire from time to time. So maybe your hair is a little singed too. You just have like little tidbits of smoke coming off. Little just everything everything's a little bit singed. That's that's okay. That's part of it. You understand as a wildfire druid that that being lit on fire, that's just part of nature. Sometimes things catch on fire. There are forest fires. You and uh, and Smokey the Bear do not get along, I bet. Do they have Smokey the Bear in, uh, in other countries? It's a Mitch Hedberg joke, isn't it? He talks about Smacky the Frog. I don't remember what the joke is. I just remember he heard about Smacky the Frog. Man, Mitch Hedberg. Funny dude. R.I.P. Imagine if he was on Twitter. Get some good stuff. Um, all right, it is way past 7.30, but I'm just going to go till I finish this drawing, and I haven't even gotten to the pup yet, so we got to get, we got to get to the pup. I think maybe like sort of a fiery motif for the, for this sort of gnarled staff you've got as well. I love a nice gnarled staff. Just goes all the way down. I don't know about this arm. I keep I keep redrawing it. I gotta just I gotta just commit. We're over time. We're over time, y'all. I got freelance I got freelance work to do. It's okay. It is okay. All of this is fine. That's good. That looks all right. Maybe sort of like longer, longer strands for the bottom bit. Cause I don't want to draw legs right now. You gotta, you gotta understand that I'm, I'm past drawing legs. But I do need to draw this hellhound. So, you know, that's you. That's you with your, with your fire and your staff. And you're living it up in the woods. We gotta get a little cute little pupper. A cute little hellhound pupper. Hellhounds are pretty big, so I imagine a pupper will still be on the larger side. Let 
and they're like sort of sort of smoldery. He's a cutie. Look at this friend. Yeah. He just wants to play. He just wants to There he is. Oh, what a buddy. What a pal. And uh he's just sitting there. that. I think tieflings have little like devil tails too. So give you one of those. Poking out. Yeah. That's you guys. That's a couple of pals. Hellhounds have tails. They got sort of like long, like rat tails, according to the image search I did. So he's doing a little waggus. Cause he's a, he's happy. Guess I'm covering that up with my portrait. There. You can sort of see it there. Um and yeah. Maybe everything's kind of on fire behind you. You don't know. Fire is just part of nature, is what uh is what your character believes. And that's and that's cool. This is sort of like the technical difficulties image. Maybe I'll make this another technical difficulties. <laughs> Put a little wire in the pupper's mouth. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's the stream. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I had a lot of fun. We can, uh, I mean, we're over time, but we can still go through and look at all that we've drawn today. Uh, we've got the wildfire druid, uh, circle of wildfire druid tiefling. We've got a uh, grumpy gnome grandma, artificer wizard who makes offensive potions. We've got our feral goblin rogue. I, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I'm happy with how all of them turned out, but I, I like I like this this pose I did here uh, quite a bit. Oh, we got lamp. Uh, the uh, what is it? Street lamp. Lamp post. Lamp post. Uh, the the uh, magically brought to life lamp post fighter, with questionable um perspective on his mace. And then uh, our our drawing that we started off with that <laughs> clearly spent the most time on I think uh, this was our uh, Earth Genasi rock monk. I think you know I think these are all these are all fun in their own ways. We're figuring it out. We're just doing drawings here. Um, I hope, I hope everyone is, uh, staying safe and, um, yeah, thank, thank you all for watching. Uh, once again, there is a, uh, a link to donate in the, uh, in the panels tab, panels on my, uh, on my channel if you want to donate to the Bail Project. I also retweeted some, uh, some other local, um, like a collection of local bail funds that if people want to find out their own local bail fund, they can. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, thank you to 
malicious machinations for the subs at the end there. And uh, Mountain Ash Tree, thanks for the bits. Thank you all for watching. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. So, um, yeah, great D and D characters, everybody. Real, real good stuff. Uh, I should, I should raid someone, shouldn't I? The stream, the ending of the stream takes a takes a little minute, doesn't it? Because, because uh, then we then we go to raid. Is Carolyn streaming? She is. Oh, she's playing Warhammer. That looks like fun. All right. Well, if anybody wants to watch Carolyn play Warhammer, I'm gonna raid her channel. Um, once again, just thank you all for being you, for being cool, and keeping me company during this time. We're all we're all doing we're all doing. <laughs> what am I saying? Just thank thanks for being you. Uh, here comes the raid. It's gonna start. It's gonna start in a sec. Here it comes. It's loading up. And raid time. Bye everybody. Thank you.